Oh, here goes your tires, you buddy. Video, Kyle? Brand I new can. ones. You could have at least put the front ones on the back. Those are old ones. Moving right day and night. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to be powered by science. That's very here. true. We better be able to get two people on what turns them out. Here it comes. Yep, that's it. Because every time I'm in his office, he's sitting there and all of a sudden he just reaches like this and there's a piece of chicken in his hand. <laughs> I'm like, how much chicken is under your desk? I overshot the R&D budget this week, so I'm going to need that $250. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving it right, day and night. <laughs>Imagine so. We have some people that sneak it in at work. Now they can comfortably work from home and watch. See, see what I did nice. there? Nice, I did. We got a special guest today. Uh, our friends from Fire Bunker are going to join us. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Levon. You Sorry. do look spiffy though. You get to get the shirt and glasses on today, so you're looking smart. Yeah. Um, but we're dual streaming YouTube. Looking's half the battle. YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> Be sure to like and share the video. Click the little bell to get notification. We go live every Thursday at 1:30 p.m. Open up our doors to you to answer your questions about Hot Shots products or anything lubrication related. That's what Aaron's here to back me up on. Uh, follow us on our Instagram and YouTube. And we'd like to know where you are watching from today. So South Kyle, Dakota. I'm waiting. Still looking for a South Dakota. I think we had one when you were gone. Figures. Was it South Dakota? When I, I, we had one that was close, I think. But uh, South so, something. <laughs> so let us know where you're watching from. Uh, Today's video, we're going to recap what's going on here at Hot Shots Secret. Always answer your questions. So start posting them now below. Uh, if you got questions for Firepunk, we're going to have LaVon Miller on today. So post those Firepunk questions. I'd uh, be happy to let him answer questions for a change. There That'd be go. good. And uh, we're going to learn more about the Hot Shots Secret, the Save the Racks S10. As you now know, we kind of we're biting our lip on that for quite a while and we finally debuted it this past weekend down in Florida and I know a lot of you saw it and it's going to be a fun year I'll tell you it looks good it's running good everything so we're going to be giving away like we always today's giveaway we're going to give away some swag some I guess some t-shirts hats maybe and we got some hero cards here looks like I got our our boy Brandon Mass from Mass Traction and Brian Gray from Gray's Diesel who by the way We'll recap the outlaw <laughs> race this past weekend. There's but a Brian Gray, small amount of news, huh? Yeah, he uh, he reset and pushed the record for the 7.3 fastest 7.3 in the world. So, and how he did it is insane. I'll cover that story. <laughs> I'll cover that. It's pretty cool. So, what's our uh, weekly tech <clears throat> tip, Aaron? Well, now that it's supposed to be getting warmer, it's about time to switch back over to EDT. Is it? Is it a little so, early? I think it's. Touch early, but hmm. depends your climate, I guess. Absolutely. Okay. Not well, real, if, uh, if they feel comfortable. Since today's the first day of spring, or something like that, or we're, close. Uh, we're close. So get ready to. If you're in a colder climate, you might want to ride out that uh, diesel winter yeah. anti gel a little bit longer. Um, like we always say, and it's not a bad time if you haven't bought a bottle to get a bottle of rescue, diesel winter rescue, because mm -hmm. it's the early part of the season and the late part of the season when you think it's all done and you don't have any anti-gel in the tank where you get one last cold spell and oh, you get right. gelled up so what's the shelf life on that five years five years buy yourself a bottle throw it in the truck you're covered whether you can get through this winter or the next five winters it's going to cover your butt sometime if you ever need it so let's look at our announcements. We need to subscribe to our email newsletter, which Aaron is just subscribed and gets updates. Uh, you can get exclusive deals at hotshotsecret.com slash email. I usually find out the secret information from the email rather than in person. You're pretty much behind all our secret information. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We, we, we did have communication did have training. We did have communication training this week, so hopefully. What, what type of communicator are you? I was a little bit of everything, man. Yeah, so I was pretty close. Yep. Yep. So either I'm a sociopath or <laughs> not really well, sure what that means. <laughs> well, the shoe fits. 
All right, how about some dealer shout outs? Man, we're going through this fast. Yeah, we got a big Max, guest. Maxfield and Sons out of Chico, Texas. High Torque Trucking out of Iron Garden, North Dakota. That's North home. Dakota. That's all. That's we're close. We're close. Blessed Performance out of Gillette. What is that? Wyoming. Wyoming. H and M Truck and Auto LLC of Butler, Pennsylvania, and Redmond Heavy Duty Fleet and Automotive of Hudson, New Hampshire. And and, and I'll give a special shout out to Blessed Performance. Uh, I believe they're referred to us uh, by Mike Miller. From Gray's Diesel, uh, something he works with. Yeah. Gray's Diesel's in Florida. Mike Miller's in, I can't remember, Maryland. And he was referring to one of his buddies in Wyoming. So this diesel world is a big, small family. So uh, glad to have all you guys aboard. So welcome aboard. And the wall, you know what? Did have a really nice decal just came in. So we get, we got to see if you can stick another one up. Yeah. So don't forget, dealers out there, specifically... Wants me to shout it out. Maxfield and Sons, High Torque Trucking, Blessed Performance, H&M Truck and Auto, Redmond Heavy Duty. Send us a decal. We'll put you up on the uh, dealer wall there. And today we're at Sandcrest. Boom. That's a nice one. And check. Wait to see the color when you peel that one back. I'm not peeling it back. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh, no. Oh, you like to make it stick. So much so, for, for your crookedness. <laughs> Just like that. So shout out to Sandcrest, welcome to the wall. Any of our other dealers, partners, retailers, yeah. uh, social media influencers, you name it. Uh, send us your decal, we'll get you up on the wall. We've been doing a lot more filming. We got a bunch of how-to videos we've been doing out here. We've had quite a few cars on the rack here right behind us. We got a big four post lift. Um, so uh, be happy to throw you up on the wall, send us in your decals. Is there any copyright infringement for that being Hot Shot Secret Green? Just asking for a friend. No, no. It's not blue, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. It's a joke. That, that color's... I know. It's fine. <laughs> so what's going on on TV? Truck U at 10.30 on Saturday on Motor Trend is going to be going over Stitch and Eliminator. Yep, got a tech tip there. And also at 12.30. You is know what? in the morning? I think yeah, that's, that's a little bit That's also a year silly. apart, too. Huh. you going to go back in time for that one. <laughs> So, so last year on the 21st, <laughs> let's go back and watch that. So 10.30 and 12.30 huh. uh, this weekend on Saturday, uh, tech tips on Truck U on Stick and Luminaire. Again, good time of year for Stick and Luminaire. We're getting getting towards the back end of winter, yeah. do a little spring cleaning, spring clean that motor. It's a good time to your next right. oil change. Get some Stick in there and get it ready, running good for uh, springtime. Check. So sales updates. New spring cleanup starts, I didn't even know. But what do you know? I just said it. That? How about it? New spring cleanup sale starts today. This is a get free six get a free 16 ounce diesel extreme or gasoline extreme, Woo. your choice, with the purchase of two quarts of sticks and eliminator. Boom. Levi's got it up there. It's as if I like saw this coming or something. But you couldn't do anything better right now. Get the get the oil side and the fuel side cleaned out. Get some sticks and eliminator in that next oil change. And whether you have a gas or diesel vehicle, get your gasoline extreme, diesel extreme, um, nice bundle together for you. You're going to get uh, uh, the, the, the fuel side cleaned up free if you purchase the oil side cleanup. So you can't beat that. And no, how long is that going, Le Levi? Just started. Just started? How long is it up for? 19th to 24th. 19th to 24th. So you got five days. So get in on that. That's a good deal there. Get some free product. And also, we've got the original EDT formula still. We had uh, that extra pallet back here. Uh, we've been running through it. I, I don't know how much is left. Last, last time I saw left, there was a few hundred bottles, which is not a lot for us. It goes pretty quick. So uh, that's the 16-ounce round, not the squeeze bottle people are used to, the round bottle, and the 32-ounce, the quart bottles. This is our EDT old formula before LX4 is added to it. Still a great product, the product we've been right. using for years. Uh, we just want to get it out of here um, so we can just make sure all our, our inventory has got the LX4 in it going forward. So we got a great sale on that, so check that out. Uh, I know we have a website deal on that. And also dealers, if you want to um, stock up on cases right now, call your account executive. We're knocking the price down on that considerably. So uh, if you want to grab some of the EDT, now is the time. And like I was telling them, I know a lot of the dealers are, a lot of, a lot of the businesses are struggling out there right now. 
it's it's a good time to get this product at a, an extreme discount because you're just going to turn more margin on it then you know so um helps get some of that cash flow in our dealers pockets too to get to get the price knocked down and loves truck stop has a my love rewards of five dollar extra bonus on a purchase of two bottles of diesel extreme through april 28th so that's gonna be going for a while here yeah. so for the next <clears> month <throat> all of our loves truck stops that's their reward program my love rewards extra five dollar bonus when you get two bottles of diesel extreme you're pumped about that i'm you look you're pumped. not even able to hold it in <laughs> yeah um, i'm just thinking of all the vehicles i'm going to throw that in exactly yeah, like it's just turning like, <laughs> man so uh i'm thinking about getting quick ten dollars uh, worth of extra bonus there you go so a quick update on this past weekend we had the 11th annual hot shot secret uh, St. Pat's Classic, the loose rocker of it, big money bracket racing out there at, at VMP. Unfortunately, Mother Nature was not nice. Um, they had a they had an early day, a Thursday test and tune day, and it was packed. I mean, absolutely packed. I think he said he had over uh, nearly 200 extra cars in just for the test and tune, um, including racers uh, that were there for the weekend race. Well, Friday got ugly. Um, and I think they, it was a 5k purse Friday, a 10k purse Saturday and a 5k purse Sunday. Well, after it poured so bad on Friday night, they spent early overnight. VMP does such a good job. They got a great track staff there and they were cleaning it all day. They ended up having to scrape the track because the water got under the rubber. They had to scrape the track down to the concrete and start building a fresh surface Saturday morning. Um, but Saturday was beautiful. So they had... A late start. Uh, it was televised on Motormania TV on YouTube. You can go go now and check out uh, uh, the racing they did get in. It was some good racing, and unfortunately, what they did was they took all the purses and they put it all on Saturday because Sunday was looking bad too. So it was kind of like an all-in on Saturday, and they were moving. They were getting the cars through. There's some good racing going on, and out of nowhere, another storm showed up that wasn't even like on the radar. And, and cut their day short on Saturday. So, unfortunately, um, they didn't get the whole thing in. Michael Beard is great. He threw some extra money in to pay out all, all, all the racers. I mean, these guys left with a nice check. Um, I think, I can't even remember, I don't want to quote it, but I know guys that just made it four rounds with a $200 buy-in had something like every one of them left with like 12, 12 or 1800 bucks, something crazy like that. So. Uh, the guys left with some cash. I know it was the beginning of the year, and they'd rather race. Um, so always. Beginning or the end, it doesn't matter. Right. But that's how it is. This time of year, This, you know, Virginia is not much different than Ohio this time of year. And, and, and Michael called me, and we, we, we talked about the weekend, and he said that he got to see pretty much all four seasons this past weekend, you know. so. Uh, but you can catch the racing on, uh, on Motor Mania TV. Big shout-out to Loose Rocker. Uh, Michael Beard really uh, uh, had a good time partnering with him. And we're not done. We're going to do some more with him, uh, some more Loose Rocker events before the season's out this year. So stay tuned on that, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, keep you, we'll keep you posted. So the big news this past weekend was really the debut of the Outlaw Diesel Super Series. And off right. the top, I will say I'm really glad we got it in with um, this whole – virus scare that's been going on the bad news that we have to announce today just announced recently is our next leg of the yeah. series which is traditionally the opener at rudy's performance just got canceled uh the state of north carolina kind of locked down eight weeks and that gets us right in the window of that mid to late april um opener that we have so unfortunately our next leg just today just a couple hours ago um it announced it was canceled so we're gonna have a bit of a break before the next uh, the next leg after that, but at least we got one in and the season's underway. And what a way to start! We we debuted the 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 new look of the Say the Racks S10 with Firepunk, and we're gonna bring him on to talk about the weekend and recap everything and and chat a little bit. So um, before we get him in, you got him ready. I, let me just catch up real quick on these uh, shout outs. I see Steve French is in here from Texas. Cold Shides from Pueblo, Colorado. What's up, Dan Zelton? He's watching from the snow, snowy northern Wisconsin. See, he needs to stay on that D-Wag. Dan knows. 
All Eric right. Wilkes of Arizona. James Bruce, good afternoon. Keith Mensing, Rudolph Brothers Company is watching and ready to take hot shots, orders, and ship them. Stay healthy and safe. That's right. Rudolph Brothers is taking orders and shipping. We are too. We are still up for business. My man Dorian Reyna. Uh, got to see him this weekend. Good to see him. Ryan Riddle. Yeah, the, just him. the robot uh, is in. Says howdy. What? Two. I just ordered him a lab coat, and now he's going to change his name to the robot? No, I don't know. I still don't think Jeez he's human. Um, Abiri Udu Ugu. Man. Says, hi, guys. I'm from Nigeria. I need supply of diesel treatments. Well, Abiri, we can help you out with that. Um, send us a private message. I'll find out the best way that we can get them out to Nigeria. I don't know the logistics of that right now, but I'm sure one of our account executives would be Happy to help you out. And thanks for tuning in. Steve French said, who won the St. Patrick's Day combo? They didn't, Steve. They didn't finish it, so we didn't actually get a, a winner, unfortunately. I think talking about the love sale. Oh, you had a St. Patrick's Day combo sale? I didn't know about that. <laughs> I was in Florida. That was yesterday. Oh, I saw the mystery box thing. That's not Do really we know who won it? Or did you just randomly Jeff. send the box out to somebody? Jeff House. Jeff House. H A U S E. So, what do you win? I don't know anything about this. It's a mystery. We're not going to tell them. Well, we spoil the mysteries around <laughs> here. So, this is something, if I'm not mistaken, somebody or we picked one lucky person that ordered something and we're shipping them an extra box of a whole bunch of stuff. $150 value. Jeff House? Well, Jeff House, you got something cool coming. Is it shipped yet? Possibly. Possibly. Well, there you go. Ordered, so I'm sure it's shipped. Yeah. We don't mess around with shipping. Let's so sorry, honest. Steve French, you didn't win. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for ordering. Um, maybe I was supposed to be surprised if somebody arrives, but okay, I guess congrats to Jeff House. He's got yeah. some extra stuff coming. Let's see. Frank Odd Jr. Got them hero cards from Iron Man. That's right. Shout out to, to Frank Odd Jr. and Sr. Uh, got the Iron Man t-shirts in and the hero cards in. Oh, I should have grabbed one. We should give one away today. I'm going to give one away today, too. We, uh, we'll, we'll give one to the winner, uh, winner today. Because we got some Iron Man Hero cards and autograph, too. So they're awesome. So, LeVon Miller's watching. Stay tuned, LeVon. I'm going to bring you on in just a second. Got a question for Firepunk? I will... Actually, you can take that one. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, it's about the uh, Project Farm FR3 thing. Mm. Lynn Miller's watching. Brian Fennell's in. What's up, Brian? Nick's in. Hey, Nick, I... I posted a video of you getting treed by uh, Ryan last night, man, but <laughs> I know it was ECD, man, so you know I love you, brother. Um, LeVon replied, no, we have not been so busy getting our first race at her belt. Not had time to dig in. We'll, we'll talk about it while he's on. Art Moppin came in late. Rudy's was canceled also. Have you talked about the race yet? Nope, just getting started, brother. I will vouch for Pact, yep. So Ron Huntley, he's the announcer there, said 1,800 each in top, 1,200 each at foot break. That's what the payouts were for guys that, you know, didn't get finished. That's awesome. Down to 40 cars left in foot break and 23 in top. That's awesome. Genez is in. What's up? How you doing, bud? All right. So without further ado, uh, can we get LeVon on? And let's chat about this new look of the truck and the outlaw weekend to kick off the season. It was a good time. David Robinson shouts out from Fort Lauderdale. Just sent my 21,000 mile blue diamond oil sample off for analysis. Changed filter and topped off. Blackstone Labs doing it. Let's you know the results. Great. We can do them here too, David, if you want to send them our way. There he is. Mr. Miller, how you doing, brother? Doing good. Or are you? <laughs> can you see me? Oh, I can't hear him on my end. How's your audio, LeVon? You good? I can hear you good, yes. I can't see you. Not guys. if you can hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? It's broken. We broke the internet. We'll get him, we'll get him set up here. So, w one question somebody asked um, was Can you hear me now? The Project Farms recent test of FRC. I received an email from you saying that you're all going to perform your own test using the identical generator and settings. Um, you guys were working on that as well. You want to you want to address that, that test? No. 
don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't hear you, do you? No. Things. Politely, things are a madhouse around here. Always. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like. Okay, we're gonna do this, and it's like, what? A squirrel? I mean, well, it's in general. In general, we're, the, the we, thing plan, with the we plan on reproducing. There's, and before we get started, I really appreciate the Project Farm videos. It's They're awesome. It's non-biased. Typically, excellent testing. But there was a small, I mean, I'm, that's a little bit of room for improvement. How's that? Well, here's for the this, thing. Let's, let's, for let's, this let's put it this work. way. With our FR3, and, and Levon can attest to this, because honestly, it's kind of the story of us getting into motorsports was right. first testing FR3 at Firepunk. Well, what you don't see in, in, in the testing, and when we put FR3 on the dyno, we idle the motors for at least 30 minutes, and we usually right. put them under a small load. Uh, the FR3 has a carbon nanotechnology in it, um, and we're talking nano-sized little typing, tiny, itty bitty, tiny carbon balls that need to find, and, and the advantage of them being car carbon is they are nano-sized, they get in every single little tiny, itty bitty nook and cranny. That doesn't happen in the first 10 seconds you pour that in, right. in, in the oil right. of the vehicle. So. And a matter of fact, um, I wish you could probably pull up the, the, the dyno chart actually from even when we did a firepunk. What we often find is we, we even ourselves get impatient when we do the FR3 testing because we, we want to keep it in the, uh, put it in the motor and let it idle, let it get under load, let it work its way into the motor as long as we can. And we always say at least half hour, but when you're standing there on the dyno, like 15 minutes goes by. 20 minutes goes by, you're like, oh, three, just pull it. Three you know minutes good. goes by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we get a little jumpy, but when done properly and letting the FR3 work into the motor, um, especially after a half an hour, and then we do pulls, that's when we always see our horsepower gains. And then on top of that, each pull, each, right. we get more and more horsepower each pull. It's literally a, li a linear line that gets more and more, which is telling us under load, that's really, it's really forcing the FR3 into the motor and in, 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 into, into all the nooks and crannies, giving right. it the bearing surface, like we like to call it, which gives you the flat film layer surface that allows the nano lubricant to do its job on top, which reduces friction, allows us to make heat dissipation down, power up, all that good stuff. So, again, the 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 Project Farm, we love it, we love no, it, yeah, not... we love it. Um, unfortunately, we ne we'll never see again if you just pour it in the motor and start your test in yeah, instantaneously and, and, and it, put no load on the motor right, at no all. Load. There's very little friction. I mean, it's a small motor. There's mm -hmm. not much friction. And he actually I mean, mentions it at the right. end of the video, Agreed. too. He's like, I did he put a load on but... it, but um, unfortunately, a lot of people just kind of watch the first like five minutes. And, you know, the We're rest out. of the, right. the video, uh, the bearing test came out great. You know, the and I wear uh, uh, everything. But uh, so, yeah, we were a little disappointed so, that the product was tested a little. Am I, am little, I allowed little, to clarify something since he asked? Sure. On the oil analysis, where it shows the silicone, yeah. FR3 is not a silicone-based product. The area, the wavelength where that shows up is also the same spot where the nanoparticles show up. Right. So we've did several tests with and without oil, straight FR3. It always shows up that exact little hump right there. Right. So, so and we even see so, it on our own and, analysis. And, right. Yeah. Um, that's. What, when it, when it comes in, sometimes we'll see silicone and we're like, oh, there might be some dirt in the oil. And we're like, eh. Let's well, FR3. FR3. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now if we see high levels of silica, right. then we know it's past our Absolutely. level of FR3. So, so yeah. So that's to answer your question on the uh, Project Farm. Um, not, and it's not his fault, too. He can't understand. No, he can't. We, you know, we don't put instructions on dyno testing our, <laughs> our right. oils in the bottle. Um, put it in and use it. Same thing with our stick cylinder, which has FR3 in it. The gains you see start to get gradually better and better and better. Um, we sometimes have people call in customer service and say, hey, I tried your FR3 or your stiction eliminator and I haven't seen any gains yet. And we'll say, well, how long have you had it in? And say, well, I drove around the block. And so we have to tell them, you know, let's get 100, 200, usually by 500 miles, you're really going to start seeing the gain. And that's the same thing. A dyno is a little bit, expedites that a little bit because you're putting it on such an extreme load. But again, a generator at idle or after pouring, it's kind of tough. Tough. So a little tough. Yeah. We try it again here, Levi. Technical difficulties. Let's see if we can get them up. How you guys doing? There, there he go. is. We're good, bud. Can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Yes. All right. Cool. Can I can me? hear you. Very good. 
Good. So what's up, man? It's <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It is. You're trapped up in an office, right? Not as beautiful as it was in Florida this past weekend, but <laughs> no, that we had to come home. Spoiled us for sure. We almost got stuck down there. That would have been nice. I wouldn't Except complain. Everything's closed, so there's not too much to do if they're closing beaches and racetracks. Yep. Well, and we just kind of announced. I'm sure you heard that uh, Rudy's got canceled. So. Yep. We're gonna have a little more time off before the next race. It sounds like. I know. I'm not sure I'm excited about it, but uh, we can always use the time uh, as long as we can stay busy here at work and people keep buying parts, and then uh, we'll be all set. Yep. And I think that's important too. It, it, it's you know I'm I talk to our dealers all day long, and uh, throughout times like this, it's really important to support small business. You know, I mean, Absolutely. there's. There's this is what keeps things going. They're the ones that have the toughest time recovering from from stuff like this. Uh, not to say that the, you know the big companies don't need need love too, but um, they're usually built to withstand a little bit more. Uh, so, all of you out there, this isn't the time to, to 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 hide. It's it's really try to support your local community and your local business as much as you can, including Firepunk Diesel right here in Ohio, friends of ours. So, um, I'm sure you got more. Uh, you got more time to work on more trucks now, at least for the next month. Right. Well, we've, I mean, we've always been busy and uh, we've got, you know, work lined up for a couple weeks, but when uh, people start, uh, I don't know, when you put some fear in the air and then people, every, everybody just kind of coops up and holds their breath and waits to see what happens. So we're really hoping this uh, coronavirus is something that can, we can do our due diligence and, and keep from spreading it and it can die down after a couple of weeks and the economy takes back off and everything is all well and we go back to racing yep so okay. let's talk about racing let's talk about the big debut i know i, I know both of us firepunk and hot shots were kind of going crazy mad the, the <laughs> last couple of weeks for the, the this this race uh with the new debut and look of the the, the truck and um Really happy how it came out. How it, it, we decided to go a completely different look than what people are used to, right. and able to pull it off and get it done in time. And it was a, it got quite a quite a response down there in Florida. Yeah, it was exciting. It was definitely something that uh, came about really quickly for us, and for the time that it took uh, to get everything done, we're really happy with how it turned out. And uh, I know it. It was something that showing up down there, we were kind of untested with a new engine. The engine was, you know, had been put through its paces on the dyno, but now we have changed our weight bias on the truck and new suspension set up, and it was just, uh, we weren't really sure what to expect. So to be able to come out and uh, get the thing to go, you know, pretty close, put it in the 20s, the first weekend out, we were really happy that we were able to at least get the thing to go straight by the end of the weekend. Yeah, and I know... Like you said, no testing at all. You're hoping to get some down in Mansker in North Carolina the week before, but weather didn't allow right. for that. Um, right. And I think you got, what, three or four test passes in on Thursday? Yeah, I think we got four licks on it. Uh, I remember on the Thursday. first one was hard left. <laughs> and then uh, what was that? The second one was not so hard left, and then yeah. the third one was a little bit left, so you're slowly right. pulling it in. Right. Well, we knew we can always go back to what we had before, and it would go down the track, but the times, you know, the 60-foot times that we had before is not good enough for what we want long-term. So our goals this year are to come out and see how fast we can get this truck to go, and for that to happen, to go fast in the eighth mile, you have to start by going fast in the 60-foot. So we weren't backing down on, on power. We were leaving the power in it and trying to figure out how to make the chassis take it. Yep. And speaking of some numbers, uh, I believe there are some 110s in there, 60 foots, and then you got into, what, 109, 10... You... Uh, we put a 107 on the board, which was our best 60 foot time that that truck's done. Uh, that's still, uh, like last year, our best 60 foot time was a 108, and but for the average, we were 110s to 113s last year. So we had a couple of them, uh, one sub 110s one this weekend, uh, went 107, and in uh, like our 28 pass, that was a 109, 60 foot. So we're really hoping that we can get that to uh, 102s or better, and I don't think we're going to give up until we can get there, because for us to 
have a chance at putting that truck in the threes, I think we need to be sub 102, 60 foot. And, and you weren't still yet giving it all the power. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's definitely, it's about ramping in power. So sure. we can put all the power we wanted on the line, but if you can't get it to, uh, you got to plant the tire, drive the tire into the ground, and or go into controlled spin. So there's there's a fine line in those first 10 feet. Of, there's a lot of things that happen in the chassis that has to play nicely together. In every pass, you gather data, and you make adjustments for the next one, and it keeps getting better. And it really, the longer longer the weekend you can stay at the racetrack with everything staying together, you can make progress pretty quickly. Right, right. And even, even at that point where before, you know, we really turn up the wick on it, uh, some other crazy numbers I heard from the weekend. I believe you guys did a zero to 60 miles per hour in 0 0.65 seconds. Yes, less than a second. So 0.65 of a second, uh, we are at 60 miles per hour. So that makes, uh, kind of puts things in perspective of what you're doing with a drag truck as opposed to what you have in the street cars that, you know, think three seconds to the 60, the zero to 60 is fast. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and what kind of G-force was that pulling? Uh, we hit 3.2 Gs. That was also our highest Gs we've ever seen that truck at, 3.20. And like two seconds into the run, we were still pulling 2.93 Gs. That's nuts. That's just, it, so, you know, we, we, we love to give Larson a hard time about lifting. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how you, I don't know how you can physically push your foot forward on a throttle when you have 3.2 G's just pressing you into the seat, you know, it's, uh, right. uh, but to his credit, he wasn't taking an excuse. He was like, no, I, can, I you know, I can still get my foot down. I don't know what's going on. So, <laughs> right. But, yeah. One of the test passes on the hit, G's came up and, uh, throttle, uh, throttle position dropped back a good bit. And, uh, he saw that data log and I was like, don't let that happen again. And next pass is hundred percent all the way through. It's just a mental thing. You have to physically, decide that you're going to keep your foot planted 100 percent through the firewall even when uh the g's are sucking you back in your seat yeah and the things mm -hmm. all new i mean all new motor uh the chassis more or less stayed the same but you did a lot of uh, uh, uh weight changes and it moved stuff around quite a bit so um right first race of the year you almost got to get that trust back up to be able to stay in it <laughs> right and, uh, I make don't sure know you know it. it's gonna be in a safe range, when you put the thing 170 mile an hour down the track, you don't want to uh, all of a sudden figure out your, that you've got a suspension problem or alignment issue or something like that. So I agree. Anytime that you go through and you turn every wrench and nut and bolt on the truck, and then you want to make sure that we didn't miss something before we just send the thing into orbit. Now, the, the past before uh, the 100% throttle position, how much did it lift, did you say? Well, the pedal position, I think, came down about 60% on okay. that, but it was it's just enough that, so, you know, it's just for a fraction of a second, um, but it's enough that that will stick the tire in the hit and it directly affects your 60 foot. So really you kind of kind of throw that uh, wheel speed data out when you see a drop in fuel quantity during your 60 foot. So so just to index that, I believe, uh, I believe Cody's pedal position was 30.9, if I'm not correct. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> Doesn't maybe hasn't eaten quite as many Wheaties as Larson has, and he's maybe not quite as firmly planted in his seat, and he just kind of flies around in there. I love you, Cody. <laughs> he's gonna be mad. I know. Um, before we get too much further, I we do a little thing around here saying uh, it's a little get to know us segment, a little uh, rapid fire personal thing, just to find out a little more about who we're talking to. So you're you're gonna get the uh, quick fire today, Levon. All right. All right. So number one, where were you born? I was born in Plain City, Ohio. I have not ventured very far that, from uh, where that, I originated. That often comes gets shown in the next few questions. Where did you grow up? Well, same place. Actually, the shop is about a uh, quarter mile from the home farm where I grew up at. Quarter mile? Uh, so kind of right across the field. And uh, we actually, the shop property now adjoins some of property that my dad owns. I never knew that. What was your first job? My first job um, officially was working for my great uncle uh, doing, he did large custom homes. So I did, in between high schools, I worked for him 
did anything from uh, putting footers in and to help trim out the or straighten up framing to cleaning up trash to uh, trimming floors, laying hardwood floor. I got in a wide variety of everything in con the construction zone working for him. Do you see that being used at all today with the stuff you do? Uh, yeah, very much. Because when I go home, my wife wants me to do some things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so where did you go to school and what did you like to study in school? Um, I went to Plainview Christian School, which is a private Christian school. Uh, we, the Plain City area is a is a Mennonite community, so we grew. Up, I grew up with had a conservative upbringings, and that was like a Christian school from like uh, three or four different local churches. Um, we had a total of 17 people in my grade. Was the biggest uh, class that I had throughout school. And what I liked to study about school was I don't know. I didn't like that much about school altogether, honestly. <laughs> um, I did not do terribly at it, um, but it was. Things, things that we lived right down the road from it, I would spend most of my time uh, wondering what I'm going to do after school. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, did you play sports growing up? Uh, we did, and not not professionally. I mean, we played a lot of softball. Um, that was a lot of big thing that we did at school. Um, softball, volleyball, some basketball. I'm too short to really be good at basketball, so <laughs> I excelled at things like ping pong, things like short people could really be good at. <laughs> So when did this whole building here on ice skating rink come in? And I know you guys are like hockey fans. I know Lynn is. But right. you guys built a rink in, next to Firepunk last year. Yeah, that was uh, – Lynn did that in his yard. And his kids are into hockey. Uh, they've, they've been playing hockey for three years now, I think. And uh, they eat, sleep, breathe hockey, so they can. You can ask them each team and what their buzzer sounds like when they score a goal, and Lane will tell you everything about it. Wow. Um, I'm not as well versed in hockey as Lynn is. Lynn will uh, listen to sports talk radio all day, every day, and I don't do that quite as much. Do you as he get does, out on so. the ice when he makes the rink? Do I? Do you get out on the ice when he does? I did. Um, I did not. I drove. I rode the snowmobile over there one Saturday afternoon and pulled the kids around for a while. There you but go. Occasionally, I've gone to the ice skating rink with my daughter and taken her ice skating. She likes to go. It's not that I can't do it. It's just after about 20 minutes, my feet hurt so bad, I'm off. <laughs> yeah, ice aid for me. Uh, so, what is your favorite hobby? I think I probably have an idea what that is. <laughs> I like racing. So. I think uh, growing up, we had various different hobbies. We, I did a lot of um, model cars when we were, I don't know, Dad started on us when we were probably 10 to 12 and put a lot of model cars together, which then turned into model rockets. And model rockets kind of got out of control because we were, you know, I don't know, it was when we were young enough that we didn't have a good income and we were building rockets that were taller than us and and we had altimeters all in, our, in it and we were trying to, you know, launch payloads and all kinds of stuff and it got too expensive so we stopped doing rockets and then a couple years later buy diesel trucks we should have just stayed into rockets <laughs> yeah these diesel trucks are cheap <laughs> right so what is well, your... coming out of construction working for my great uncle me and my dad did vinyl siding for a while um dad farms 150 acres and did that kind of on the side and did construction work so when I was 19, I kind of wanted to get into something a little more specialized, and that's when I started doing decorative concrete. I worked with a product called Fleximent, and where we did vertical stamping, faux stone, um, all kinds of uh, overlays, that kind of stuff. That was pretty creative, hand carving. I really enjoyed it, but the weather really played a big part of it, and that's what I had originally bought my truck for was for that business. And then obviously, you know how it goes when you're young and you have horsepower, you break parts and you figure out how to how to make it go faster and then you tear it up and fix it and repeat. And that went on for a couple of years. And as you know, by the time 2009 came around, I had been doing enough work uh, evenings and rainy days on trucks. That spring of 2010, I had more truck work than I had concrete work. So it kind of all transformed from concrete business into a truck business and kind of without a, a business plan it kind of all fell fell together 
kind of went that direction, like the, the housing market had kind of collapsed in 2008, so people weren't spending as much money on their houses, and uh, people wanted their trucks worked on, so that's how that all came about. It seems like it was meant to be. I guess so. So, <laughs> what's, uh, last couple here, what's your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? I would say, I don't know, probably Thanksgiving. I can imagine that. Every anytime it's time to eat in the fire punk pit, it feels like Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I used to like when you grow up in school, then you had Thanksgiving, and then you went back to school for another long time, and then you had Christmas. And now, as an adult, Thanksgiving and Christmas almost seem like they run together because they're so close to each other, and it's just part of getting older. The older you get, time just flies. Absolutely. Well, and it's great now. I mean. I see so many of that 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 next Miller generation running around the track now too, and uh, being able to have them on the road is really cool. Yes, for sure. I know my son Braxton really enjoys going to the racetrack, and now it's a little bit of a handful sometimes to take him along, but he uh, he's definitely in his element until uh, he gets to about 10 o'clock at night, and then he's like, Dad, it's been a really long day. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's about time for you to go to sleep, bud. <laughs> But we're in the finals. <laughs> All right, so what's your favorite beverage? Alcohol or none, but I have a feeling I know what this might be. I, I at least know what I see mm -hmm. a lot in, the, in, the, in that pit. That's a good question, honestly. Um, if it's alcohol, it's probably uh, Crown Vanilla and uh, Diet. Really? Probably. I was going to say Twisted Tea. Hi, twisted tea is all right. That's there's a lot of twisted tea <laughs> yeah, around the fire a Larson trailer. Thing. Maybe that's just all but, Cody. Uh, that, Cody definitely got us started on it. I mean, <laughs> it just makes it easy. Yeah. Uh, favorite TV show or movie to finish up? Hmm. I don't know. I can't give an honest answer on a favorite TV show because I don't watch enough to really. I'd say uh, maybe give the Firepunk you YouTube channel. I I mean I hope I don't like watching myself that much, but <laughs> I uh, I do watch a lot of YouTube. We recently we canceled our Direct TV at home, and we've just been watching a lot more YouTube, YouTube TV stuff like that. But during race season, I have enough stuff going. I usually come home and I spend my time outside riding dirt bike and four wheeler with the kids and. Uh, maybe cook dinner on the gray egg for the wife and the family. And uh, once the kids are in bed, I don't have much time that I would rather watch TV rather than sleep. So usually sleep prevails. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, and everybody out there, if you guys haven't subscribed to uh, Firepunk's YouTube page, please do so. They do really good content. It's really interesting. Their post-race, uh, and shout out to Connor. Connor's just awesome it's, he does other videos for him and um mm -hmm. they always do a very good race recap video which i think you just put up yesterday the day, right. or the day before but on their average weeks of work um they'll have one or two videos they put up a week uh kind of like what we try to do here just let people know what's going on but it's really just um counter falls around the shop and you can see the builds that are going on um at firepunk and uh the different types of stuff they work on sometimes it's just them going to lunch those are sometimes my favorite. <laughs> Watching the whole firebug crew go to lunch is always a is always entertaining. Uh, but okay, so let's let's get back to this past weekend here, uh, the season opener. Um, I do want to run through uh, the classes and the winners real quick to give a shout out to those guys. I know in the here we go in the Jamo ET bracket class. Who else, Mr. Ryan Riddle? Takes home the uh, robot, Ryan the, Riddle, the, the scientist, the robot. Yep. You name it. Um, he takes home the win. He actually got in the finals against already mopping another hotshot secret sponsored racer already had a tough week, man. Already, already had some, some problems with his new truck. He ended up borrowing Ryan Milliken's daily driver, Nissan Titan and entering an ET and took it all the way to the finals. And losing with Ryan, just like he took our our hot shot truck last right. year in Rota. So, shout out to Artie. He can jump in anything, and you know, right at the finals. Uh, Nick Morris made the semifinals, and Levon. One thing I noticed also was uh, Justine made a quarterfinal appearance there in ET. 
So I, I understand we're going to see Justine racing pretty much the whole year in an E-Team as well? Yeah, she's planning to race Larson's truck this year. And I'll tell you what, she looked extremely comfortable, like smooth. She, yep. she was cutting some I just, on those uh, guys, so. You're not going to get good at racing unless you take a lot of lights. So that's what I tell guys. Like people, people always seem intimidated. They don't want to come out and race ODSS because like, man, you know, I, I haven't raced that much. But just get out and do it. And every time you do it, you get a little bit better and you get a little more comfortable behind the seat. You don't have quite as many nervous shakes getting getting coming up to the light and the more comfortable you get the more confident you get and the more rounds you're going to win yep and that reminds me not to get back to your youtube channel again but almost a year ago you guys did a video kind of on introduction to kind of bracket racing and, how, and getting into the sport it's a good video to go watch for somebody who's thinking about doing it um mm -hmm. you can grab the truck you drive around every day and, and, and come out and enter one of these events and have a blast so um, so congrats right. to Justine for getting out there. She's sitting fifth in points after, uh, after one round, one, one leg. So congrats to her, uh, ATS diesel power, the 770 index class, Jacob Middleton took the win on that. Um, shout out again to Ryan Riddle. He ended up making the semifinals where he's a, he's a defending champ of two classes. So, um, and Jerry Atkins, another sponsor, sponsor driver made the quarterfinals and he was in a brand new truck that he just got too. So. A lot of new trucks. There's a lot of carnage this weekend, too. There's a lot of breakdowns, but that's how it will be, you know, the first first time out of the year. And then we get to the Thoroughbred Diesel 670 Index class and another Miller one. Mr. Landon Miller uh, with, the, with the Mega just uh, looked good. So he takes the win against Zach Danner. And, I mean, he's pretty much just looked like he hasn't skipped a beat. Or is it the truck? Are we giving the truck all the credit? Because that truck's just automatic on, the, on on those tunes no i mean landon's doing done really good with it and that's just, you know it just goes to show with being comfortable in your seat it makes a big difference and the, i mean the quad cab is beatable because it's it's a heavy truck it's not going to get the best 60 foot of the class um and when it's heavy it's hard to get as good of a reaction time um but being consistent it, it usually plays a big part so i know that truck's going to go out and it's going to run in the 70s every pass out and Landon's been getting the thing dialed in, so he should be a force to reckon with this year, hopefully. Yep. Yep, and then we get to the 590 class, uh, the Firepunk Outlaw 590, and that was some good good fun competition this weekend. Um, shout out to Brett Markham. He, he mentioned the quarterfinals. He actually uh, was the one who won our, our, our gift package, which it turned out to be... I ended up having to like split around because so many people broke and they needed fluids. And since I flew down there, I didn't have any fluids. So uh, Brett was nice enough to uh, donate those back to me so I could help some people out. But we're getting them shipped out to him now. And um, it came down to the finals between Austin Doidge and the Firepunk Anteater truck um, against Rod McMaster. Both, again, Hot Shot Secret sponsored drivers. I love it when we get an all Hot Shots final there. And... Uh, Rod took the win, and congrats to Rod. I mean, I was really happy for him. I was really sad for Austin. Yeah, what happened with that truck? Yeah, can you tell us exactly? I mean, on that? it was, for those of you that haven't seen the video, I think there's a few videos out there, um, but the truck ran away. I mean, it, it got a little scary there for a minute. Yeah, it was a bad deal. Uh, he pretty much got the thing up into boost and drove into the beams and was just about ready to launch when the throttle linkage the return spring that holds the throttle back broke which flipped the throttle to full throttle so the pump went full fuel which activated nitrous so he's sitting there on the line holding the truck back and the truck goes full fuel full nitrous everything's on and luckily i mean i don't know the output shaft of the trans broke uh, after it went full fuel so it didn't drive the truck forward and um, he was, he had a fuel kill in the truck, but he couldn't, he was strapped himself tight enough with the five point harness. He couldn't reach it until he unclipped himself. So, you know, it took, by the time the everything happened, it still took five to 10 seconds, a wide open throttle till he got the thing shut down and the engine, he's got a hole in number one piston. So crankcase pressure came up and it blew the, uh, it blew the oil turbo oil drains out of the block, which blew oil out on the hood, which leaked down on the track, made a huge mess on the track with like two finals left to go. It was kind of a bum deal, but 
he pulled the head and engine out of the truck last night and uh, definitely has some carnage. So broken output shaft in the trans and uh, a hole in number one piston and number six piston looks like it was all well on the way. Oof. Yikes. Yeah, I'm glad it, I mean, when you get a runaway like that, it can be dangerous and catastrophic. So glad no one got hurt. Glad he got it. He got it. He had it turned off. Um, I did talk to him the other day. He was messaging me saying, uh, it's a good time to get some nice uh, internal pictures of, of the motor. He's like, are you guys interested? Because he runs all our fluids and we had just done an analysis at the end of last season. And he had one of the most beautiful oil analysis we've ever seen for running all year in a 590 class. Um, I mean, it was like, it was like brand new oil. There was like the lowest particle count we'd seen. I mean, it was really impressive. So much so that like we told him, Hey, just hang the keys and get ready for next year. And he really didn't even like touch it in the off season and he was going to do a tear down, but now he's kind of forced to do a tear down, unfortunately, <laughs> but, uh, he's like, I'll get some good pictures of the bearings and everything while I'm in there. So unfortunately we, we like to see that stuff, but not from that reason. So, um, right. but we get Austin, we got you back. We're, we're here for you on the rebuild and look forward to getting you out as soon as possible. And, you know, we got a little extra time now with Rudy's being down. So I'm sure Austin will be back bigger, be bigger and better. It'll be done by the end of the week. He probably will knowing them. Um, and so today's and, Thursday. So right. Do the math and shout out to Rod McMaster too. I mean, uh, I know he had, uh, his truck was up at, at Ryan's and like they showed up, they were working on it the night before. Uh, he goes out there and I, I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think his like first pet test pass was like a 591. It's like, wow, this thing's working or 592 or something. So, um, it was good to see, uh, Rod take the win on that. So congrats to Rod out there as well. And then we got the hot shot seeker pro street class. The, uh, yeah. uh this got interesting because honestly, somehow I missed the memo on them <laughs> pulling the, the five second restriction. I guess they just did that like a couple weeks ago. And so normally that class is roof to five or floor yeah. to five seconds. So, you know, they've always wanted to run a 499, you know, you know, in the fours, mm -hmm. but you do it at the, at the mercy of being disqualified. Um, this is back, LeVon, when you had your pro street truck. Right. I remember when I like first started, so I started working with you guys down at Rudy's, you hit that, it was a 5002. And it's just like, right. well, that's about as far as you can go in, in this, you know, conquered mm -hmm. this. And um, now uh, they've got Derek Rose and, and Johnny Gilbert from Stainless Diesel, they both said they've got four seconds in these trucks. Well, I I thought I didn't know the rule was that they took the rule out so they can run four and still call it, you know, still be legit. Sure enough. Pretty much they changed it to where instead of 4,500 pounds, you can be 4,400 pounds. So they lowered the weight for 100 pounds. And then they said you have to have a 25.6 cert or, or better. So basically you're certified um, to run, it's a quarter mile certification and being it's eighth mile, so as long as you have that certification, you're between 4,400 and 5,000 pounds, you can run whatever you want. Gotcha. Um, so, and that's is, what Derek that the put cert up at 499. That, that you which like is created with when, back when you had the seven, but Hughes County. Yeah, exactly. The, that was the new cert they put in, right? When, when you had the pro street truck, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, worked with them to make that happen. 16, uh, we pretty much broke down the 850 barrier right off the bat, and that's when SFI came out and looked at the Pro Street class, and and they made some exemptions and made that 25.6 cert for us heavy guys, and that gave us that made us legal to uh, 7.99 in the quarter. Right, which you went exactly what 7.99. And five. We've been seven eighty eight at one eighty one, and we've been four ninety seven at one fifty one in the eight. Yeah. Doing work, and then you said, "Okay, enough of that. We're going pro mod now." Um, yeah. But uh, so I know Johnny was going to turn it up. Unfortunately, uh, he broke. Uh, was it an input shaft on Johnny? I believe it was it's something in the trans. I did not personally see it, so I can't answer. Yeah. Specifically. Did he jump in somebody else's truck or no? No, you think of Johnny Montesino. Oh, sorry. So, but but Johnny Gilbert, the defending oh, champ okay. of the class, who like ran the whole table last year right. in Hot Shot Secret Pro Street, um, unfortunately didn't even get to get a qualifying pass in or a, you know an elimination pass in. 
So I'm, I'm guessing he goes home with no points on it, which makes this whole Hot Shot Secret Pro Street interesting this year because now a few of you guys in the field got to jump on Johnny, and it's like anybody's game. Uh, Johnny Montesino was driving somebody else's truck. Emilio Blanco. It was Emilio Blanco. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. in the Emilio Blanco's truck. Um, he made it to the semis. The finals came down to Paul Cato and Derek Rose, which, uh, shout out to Derek Rose. I know Derek was pitted right across from you, and he had some problems after the first day. I know they they had to redo his transmission. Uh, mm-hmm. Something dropped in his trans. Yeah, he rolled a sprag in That's the trans right. in uh, Q3. Like he went a 501 or something like that, really good pass, but in the end he noticed he had a problem. Actually, I think that was in Q2, and he sat out Q3, and then they stayed up most of the night, took the trains back to Suncoast, and Ernie came out and helped him fix it up and was ready for battle on Saturday. Yeah. And I won't hesitate to mention that he was short on fluids, so he got some adrenaline nano shift in that trans, too, because yeah. uh, he, fire punk was right next door, and he needed a little some extra. So, uh, Derek, I, I noticed, buddy. I noticed. <laughs> so... Uh, Derek went on to uh, to win uh, the finals there against Paul Cato. Another good race. So congrats to Derek Rose. Uh, he's sitting in first to the Hot Shot Secret Pro Street class and Paul Cato and Johnny Montesino right behind him. So congrats to all the guys. And then we have, um, well, the pro dragster. We had Jared Jones out there again uh, doing his thing. Uh, again, like we said earlier, we're hoping to get some more dragsters out there. I hear there are a couple more coming this year, which I'm excited about that uh, get some competition for Jared. But, Thanks to Jared for always coming out there. We love watching that thing run. But the big attraction again was the big was the Pro Mod class, um, the Suncoast Pro Mod class. And um, well, I'll tell I'll tell the Brian Gray story first because Brian Gray, uh, in in the Gray's Diesel, it's a seven point three. He was having problems. He he was having problems in qualifying. They couldn't get it to start. They couldn't get it to spool. Um, and he just kept having these tuning issues. So they found a tune that worked and it could get the truck started, but then it wouldn't spool. They found, he said he found a real old tune that was like some street tune he had saved. And that tune for some reason allowed him to spool, but it wouldn't allow him to like launch. I, they, they were, they were had a mess all over the place. So, so then they finally figured it out and he had this theory that, um, I think I might've, I think it might have been live for it. Um, if you go back and check our live videos from the weekend, he had this theory that if he could get it started, which they're having problems doing, get it started under a tune, get it into the beams and spool it on this old street tune they have. And they had like zip tied or like duct taped this, his tuner button up to his gear shift. So while he's sitting on the trans brake, and that's a pretty violent truck too. I mean, when it's at full spool, it's pretty violent. And he gets the thing fully spooled up under tune. He changes the tune on the fly, on the trans brake, in the beams, and then just to get it to launch. And and, and if funny part, he later told me he was thinking about so much that he actually hit the wrong tune when he did it and had to go back and hit the right tune. So he almost screwed up during it, got it perfect, launched it, set a new personal best. So... Shout out to Brian. I mean, for all that he had to go through this weekend, um, at least he went home with personal best. He got a semifinal finish. He came back out in the semifinals. They had to replicate it again. We had a camera inside the cabin the second time, but unfortunately he wasn't able to pull off the nine button magic he had to do to get it to launch. But um, uh, love that truck. It's really cool to cool to see. But that leaves us with uh, Logan Yelton and Larson Miller. In the finals, and I don't, I don't know uh, Logan Yelton's truck that much. It was a, it's an all-wheel drive pro street truck, and I believe Levon, they're from, from California, I believe. And Levon, you told me that the truck's been around for a while, and it was actually one of the trucks that you guys modeled um, your pro street off, of, right? Uh, yeah, uh, the truck that Logan was driving is owned by J.P. Liepert. Uh, he's out of California. And he had actually hauled the truck in to Logan. Logan's been doing the transmission work on it. And so he was going to have Logan drive it in ODSS this year. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the finals was crazy. Um, and 
and maybe you could tell us a little bit about well let's let me lead up to that because <laughs> one of the things i thought was unique about about firepunk and, and, and levon you may want to tell the story about how a couple years ago uh you guys were putting up some crazy good numbers um but you didn't win the points championship in outlaw and going into last season into the 2019 season you guys have made a conscious effort that you guys wanted to win the points championship and right you had many wides in the road last year i remember whether the semifinal or finals races where you had tuning decisions to make and so forth um you know you had the fastest door slammer on the planet but you know you really had the itch to go faster but you were making the conscious decision to win a championship well right i got a little excited this year because the first why in the road comes in the first race of the year and here you are in the finals and all i could see was all you guys just kind of smiling and saying she's turned up you know screw points we're going we're going to blow or go on this and so there's a new approach this year for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 2018 was a little rough because we came out with the new truck. I mean, that was the first year for the Save the Racks and made it all the way through, and we were doing good in points and actually were leading points um, coming away from the hard way race in the fall going into Rudy's. And so like two weeks after the Rudy's race, uh, we actually had our points taken away for winning the hard way race because – uh, Larson didn't have his license to go faster than a 450 in the eighth, and we had gone 447 in the finals. Uh, so they let us keep the payout and they let us keep the trophy, but they took the points away. So that put us like 20 points behind. Um, and then, so pretty much all we had to do is win Rudy's, and we choked in Rudy's fall. Basically, we left a little bit too big of a tune-up in it and kicked the tires up against Michael Dalton, which should have been a, a, a winnable race considering that he was a, a heavier pro mod. Um, nothing against their team, but we were kind of kicking ourselves coming away from Rudy's for not just dialing it back and taking it easy because that would have won us points in 2018. So 2019, our focus was to win points. We came out of the hole swinging. The truck went 425 at UCC in the spring. We're like, man, this is great. And then we broke transmission. And we broke transmissions five times. Uh, like We didn't even make eliminations in, uh, at Holly Rock last year because we made three qualifying passes and broke both the main trans and the spare, then put a good transmission out of both of those together and broke it in the third round of qualifying. So pretty much we fought through issues in the spring, but when we finally got the bigger intermediate, bigger input in it, got everything dialed in the way it was, we only had a couple races left, and we had to just dial it back and go four, you know, high 430s, low 440s, just settle down and focus on winning points. Um, so we got our championship under our belt. This year it's about uh, setting records. So there's a big thing about a race to the threes, and I don't think anybody's denying that there's a couple people that are gunning for it. John Robinson... And the dragster went a 410 at 181 this weekend, which is now the world's fastest diesel-powered vehicle. Yeah, new record. Um, ben Chatty's coming out with a new car. Uh, there's some other chit-chat about some other uh, carbon fiber pro mods coming, and I know Wade Moody's gunning for it. So we are uh, we're going to pick up a bat and uh, swing for the fence pretty much every time out. And this is one of them. You know, so here we are, first first race of the season, and. Uh... You guys turned it up, and I know, I'm sorry, what's his name, Logan? Logan, in the left lane, just stood that thing up and just took a hard left, and I thought he put it in the wall, like, because that thing launches pretty pretty quick, pretty hard. I, I don't know if he bumped it or stopped just short of the wall. Um, I think he just kissed it. Did he? Yeah, and I mean, and he locked, he had gotten so much momentum up in, like, 10 15 feet that when he locked his front right. brakes up the whole back end came <laughs> off the ground a good four or five feet and slammed down so good save on his part uh meanwhile you guys were gone um i think i think you blew the tires off yeah we kicked the tires in 60 feet um but luckily we were able to i mean pretty much all logan would have had to do is make any kind of decent pass and he would have beat us but we were we were loaded for bear and didn't really know what was going to happen um, but also the 
with Doyle joiling down the other side of the track, you know, the track sat there for an hour, at least an hour, and it had, I don't think it was quite as on point as what it was uh, an hour previously to it, but all together we took, we kind of know what changes we want to make to make that hit stick. Um, pretty much it slammed the wheelie bar so hard it unloaded the tire, uh, so we'll probably have to move move some weight from the back to the front, and uh, hopefully it will stick it the next time, and we can put a uh, put a number on the board. And I think it was your uh, the semifinal pass. You uh, you smacked the wheelie bar so hard you broke the wheelie <laughs> on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen yeah, that. Yeah, on our 428 pass, we actually slung the rubber off the wheelie bar. Uh, the chassis changes we're doing, it's definitely changing how it how it's acting with the wheelie bar. So we just have, like I said, it's a learning curve. Every time you make a change on the truck with the suspension and the and the weight bias, uh, you got to go out and, and test so you know what it's going to do. So every pass, it gets better. Yep, yep. Well, man, our time has flown. I have like a million more questions here I didn't even get to yet. Um, Levi, do you want to, uh, roll a video, um, just to, so anybody who kind of missed this, uh, truck, here's a quick little recap, uh, of, of what she now looks like. Certainly a new look there, and uh, we're really happy at Hot Shot Secret to be on board as the, the full title sponsor. And for free now. test passes, that I think was. What's that? I think we're allowed free test passes as well. Yeah, do we get free test passes now, Levon? Is, is that the case? Aaron wants that's, some seat time in that. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> I would bet. I would <clears throat> bet his throttle position would be lower than Cody's. Probably. We just got to bolt a seat on the back. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my seat on the wing. I asked for that, but I haven't got it yet. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, we need to move it about halfway up so the weight transfer's right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But, um, again, I'm really looking forward to this year. Uh, like I said, we've been working so, so closely with Firepunk for a long time now. Um, we appreciate everything you guys do. I know our everybody who benefits, not just – particularly in the racing world. I mean, that, that truck right there has every fluid in it is a Hot Shots fluid. And we didn't have any of those fluids three years ago. And I appreciate uh, the relationship we have with Firepunk that you guys allowed us to not just come with our final formulas. And guys like Aaron, who are in the lab constantly doing crazy stuff, so, yeah. we poured a lot of stuff into that truck over the years. And really helped formulate down to what we have now, which is a product we, we stand behind um, that's powering the baddest truck on the planet. And, and although you guys have seen a lot of formulations, what you guys run in the truck is the same stuff that we sell, you know, right here out of, out of the building. And it's the R and D and the, the field testing and the track testing, the dyno testing that's allowed us to mm -hmm. create such a product. And it trickles down into our everyday drivers, you know, um, uh, you know, right through to our FR3 that's infused in every single one of those fluids that's in the truck. And so we appreciate that. We appreciate working with you guys. I know uh, it's going to be a fun year. I know already, even though our relationship's been close for a long time, 
just spending one race out there with you in Florida this weekend with the track now wrapped, wrapped hot shots. I've already gotten more questions than I ever have about the truck and everything. So I think that's probably a sign to come this year. So sure. Um, yeah, we're looking we're looking forward to it because you know likewise for us it's good to have somebody in a lubrication specialist that's got a listening ear for what our needs are. You know, you you think back three years ago when we were seeing oil pressure drops. Uh, during the run, trying to figure out is it a, a weight issue with the oil or is it G forces in the truck? And we figured all that stuff out because you know when you're just buying oil off the shelf, you don't have that uh, personal help from somebody that's a lubrication specialist. So it's been a been a pleasure working with you guys and and formulating some of these oils and lubricants that really do yield results every time out. And, and it's not over. I uh, I'm not scared to say this weekend. I think one of after your one of your first couple passes, or maybe the, after the first pass, you're like, Kyle, come here and smell this. <laughs> and they had a they had an oil sample of the trans fluid and woof. Woof. They had to drive it back up. You'll hit you'll get it soon. And it was cooked. And I'm like, oh no. But that's what that's what we're here for. It turns out, I believe it's largely because you have a larger turbo, you got a little more spool time. You guys opened the yeah. stator a little bit. Um, don't give all the secrets out. <laughs> don't give all the secrets away. Not so but, much a mystery truck now, is it, Kyle? By the, I, I, Jeez. <laughs> I give away a lot of mysteries. Man. But I know you guys have oh, made yeah. a couple tweaks, and by the end of the weekend, we didn't even make another trans change, and, and we were good the rest of the weekend on that trans fluid. Right. Yeah, with the, with the bigger turbo and all the changes we made, um, the first, I don't know, four or five times we spooled it, I was overfueling the truck, which was slowing the whole spool process down. It was taking four and a half, five seconds to get the thing on boost, and the transmission hates it. Um, but by the end of the end of the weekend, we had the thing back on the staging limiter within two, two and a half seconds, and everything was happy. So that makes a huge difference in transmission fluid if you're, you know, spending 30 seconds trying to get the, the converter to come up through versus you're coming up on the staging limiter in a couple seconds. The difference of uh, you know, way overheating your trans fluid and it smells like rotten eggs. So, um, sorry if we uh, made your lab smell bad. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Like, it just kind of goes back to, um, you know, like I said about how our relationship works now. I'm, I, he's going to be happy. He's got that little nasty bottle when we get it from you because I know I had to leave it on your, on your trailer. Because we'll take that into R and D and see if we can't even advance it more. Not like we expect any transmission fluid to hold up at that level, but if we can it's even that better of a product. So we're never scared to go back in and, 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 you know, reinvent one of our products and add to it and make it even better. So the, the amount of R and D we get out of the, the partnership is, uh, is priceless. And, um, we'll just, we'll continue to keep pushing. And I don't think anybody's making a secret out of, you know, pushing for a three second pass. I know, I know just from what I saw this weekend, it, it's got teens in it as soon as it hooks it and, and goes. Um, single digits is pretty, you know, 4.0 something is pretty crazy. Is it feasible for a Pro Mod truck to run a three second pass? I think it is feasible, um, but it is not easy. Uh, there's people are like, oh, well, you want 420s. You know, you're just, you're almost there. <laughs> Yeah, you're almost there, but um, 173 mile an hour is not 190 mile an hour. So, if you want to put a three second pass on the board, you got to have enough horsepower to put 190 mile an hour on the board, and you got to have a 60 foot. That's probably better than a 102. So that is not easily to come, you know, come across any of one of those. So it takes horsepower, it takes a chassis, and it takes a team that knows how to read data and make adjustments. Because otherwise, it'll take us three years to get there. Well, the good news is, like you said, there's the the industry and diesel motorsports in general is getting really interesting. There's a few other teams out there that are, are shooting for it too now, and it's going to be a, a, a fun race. Um, my chips are on Firepunk, but uh, also you get a little uh, seat time too. A little, little start always helps as well. Um, now we got it lined up. I look forward to seeing what's next, and uh, it's just going to be a fun year. So for all you out there, um, it's not going to be all that you see from Firepunk either. I do think we're going to see this truck, uh, I believe, in a, a no prep race with uh, Bill Lutz, correct? 
Yeah, if he, I mean, obviously we'll have to kind of see what events uh, get canceled this spring, right. but we do have that on our agenda uh, to be able to hit uh, the Judgment Day no prep if Bill and Bill Lutz ends up posting those for sure. Uh, we, we made it to the finals in the fall race last fall. We had a ton of fun. Uh, and then we're also planning to go to PDRA uh, finals in Virginia this fall as well. So as a VMP. trying to diversify a little bit and uh, let some other people see what diesel power is all about. And But we really are hoping that we have something that uh, is fun for them to watch. You know, it, everybody thinks of a big, smelly, slow diesel. And we like to try to revolutionize that and see how fast we can go. Uh, with you know making clean power and really we're being fuel efficient with it because you you put a uh, alcohol powered engine uh, that makes 2,500 3,000 horsepower and they're using you know 10 12 gallons of fuel in a pass and we're using less than a gallon it is impressive what we can do with diesel power it's fuel efficient and I will say I want to keep working on you if schedule allows I want to get that truck up to the hot shot secret untouchable no prep in Marion too Sure. I would love to do some of that stuff, but uh, we'll take uh, one event at a time and see how we go. You got it. So, uh, shout out to Firepunk, DNJ Precision for putting together this incredible motor. Exergy, I know uh, Nitrous Express is on board, and we're carrying the uh, uh, Save the Racks flag high um, and really looking to bring some, some awareness as we have the last couple of years to that campaign. It's going to be a fun season. We're looking forward to it, bud. Any last words from you before we head out for the day? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, this is uh, definitely a big opportunity for everybody involved. And uh, we don't, we also, yeah, like you mentioned, we don't want to lose, lose track that we're, we are raising awareness for the Save the Racks campaign. Um, that is something that's very personal um, to the Articona family that we build a relationship with and uh, bringing awareness, the breast cancer awareness, you know, they almost lost their mother. And that's what they're, you know, for all the race fans out there, if you have somebody that's struggling with cancer, there's other people that are there to help. And uh, we are looking forward to being able to have some fun and bring awareness along with it. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on, brother. I'm sure everyone's going to hear a lot more this year about it. Had a great time uh, debuting this truck this weekend. And we'll be in touch soon for the next chapter. Keep everyone posted. It's going to be a good time. All right. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. LeVar Miller. Yeah, nice to good to have LeVar Thank you. On. It is. After a crazy, crazy <laughs> debut weekend out there. So um, I'll tell you, for you folks that have never been to a diesel race, it's like no other. I want to give a special shout out to Matt Rice from DNR Auto. He came down to... Uh, to the race are this allowed, weekend. Are you allowed to say his other business on, on the air? No, not yet. Not yet? We should get a sticker on the wall, though. <laughs> but, I'll, uh, I'll do it. But Matt Rice came down, worked his butt off. He got more content than you guys will ever imagine than we've ever had before. So stay tuned. We've got a lot of pictures, a lot of videos coming out from this Florida race. It worked out perfect that we had him down there because now we don't have a race for a while here. Um, so it'll be good to get, get a lot of this out. And Matt is a guy who sees a lot of racing, and right. and he, you know, he kind of knew what he was getting into, but it's something else. I tell you, if you've never been to one of these races, you got to come see what these diesel are doing nowadays. It, it's it's just fun to watch in person. And I'll say the truck with the new wrap, they kept telling me how good it looks, you know, on the pictures and stuff. It looks insane in person, and it even looks crazier going down the track. Um, so it's going to be a fun fun season to watch. And remember, Firepunk Diesel hosts a leg of the Outlaw Diesel Series, so. For those of you here local in Ohio, I believe it's meh, June 5th, 6th, something like that. Am I right? You don't know. First weekend of June, um, uh, Firepunk hosts the race up here. So for our local friends, come on out to it. It's a great, it's a, it's a great time to you know see it in person and everything. And uh, just really looking forward to an awesome season. And hopefully hitting that three-second barrier, which would be... Pretty crazy. It's not hopeful. It's going to happen. So you got any, let me give a couple of uh, stuff away. Um, you know who I'm going to give something to? I am Maybe going not. to send out some swag and a hero card to Mr. Ron Huntley Jr. Ron, give us a message to Levi on the Facebook Messenger. Let us know an address to send you something to. 
and how about Mr. David Robinson? Why don't you give us a message as well? And we'll send you out some swag and some autographs. There's my mom in here asking why I'm not quarantined. But I'm good, Ma. I love you too. Um, James, James Bruce, just to finish up on the question, James, what, wow, LeVon is so pretty. He broke the internet. Good thing he is fast, but I think Larson is faster and prettier now. And Lynn is the big stud, and Landon is the trump card. But you got to watch out for little sis, Ro. She's the toughest. That's true. That's true. I, Ro would be the last one I'd mess with. So um, thanks, for everybody, watching. I know we ran a little bit over, uh, but happy to have LeVon on. It's going to be a fun season. All I can say is stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more content this year. We have a... Thanks to this video department we have now putting together. And I think we have some plans to really get a little bit more of the video content developed. So you can actually see some of the stuff that we're always telling you about. Uh, and we're looking forward to it. So, any kind of last words from you, man? I, have, I really have no words. You have no Today, words. You're I, speechless. I left him at home. <laughs> okay. So, until <laughs> next honest. week, check out uh, the Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be po posting a lot of the pictures and the videos from this weekend. Thanks to Matt Rice for coming down and uh, uh, getting a lot of that stuff for us. You're, you're really going to enjoy it. So until next Thursday, we'll be back here at 1.30 next week. Woo. Or we may not be. Maybe we'll be doing it from home. Right. But we'll see. So stay safe out there. We'll Let's, see you next week. We can do that.